Hello. Hi, Ed. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Excellent. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, it's not going to disappear in a few minutes. Is it? I hope not. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. so, the, so basically what you want to do when you're learning any language the first time, or when you, when you first start learning language, is you want to take words which um, connect sentences, like um, but, if, although, these kinds of words. Because what they end up doing is they make you quickly get to the point where you can link together things that you might already know how to say. So in the beginning, you don't know anything. But when you're learning, you'll learn basic words. And a lot of people will just carry on learning basic words for a long time, and they won't really be able to put it together in a sentence. Or they might be able to say um, a short, quick sentence, something like, I watch TV, or I eat something. But they won't be able to say... Um, something which combines the two in some way. And that's because they usually neglect to learn these connecting words at the beginning. They do learn them obviously later on, but they neglect to learn words like although and if and so on. So what I do when I teach, so I just start to learn Thai. And so what I'll do when, I, when I'm learning Thai is I'll, I'll teach myself, I'll find a Thai person just who speaks Thai. And I'm teaching myself, but it doesn't matter if you're teaching somebody else, you just do the same thing. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a hold of some of the basic vocabulary, something very basic like walk, sleep, eat, drink, this kind of thing. And then I'll get those crucial connecting words. I actually have a list of Japanese I was using to teach, and I could use this as an example. Okay, So I've got a list of Japanese words here, but you can take these words in any language. Okay, um, So the list is when, because, from, until, if, although, um, and but, and then there are a couple of others like so, and and so, and then, and with, and also, there are actually quite a few, um, <laughs> but if, if you know all these words, if you, if, if you look at anybody speaking any language, you'll find that they're, you, they're almost used one of these words in every sentence, because you can't really say anything without, you know, using one of these words to connect it to whatever you're going to say next. Yeah. And so when I'm teaching or when I'm learning a language, I usually take some of the most basic vocabulary and I take words like this so I can immediately start to make sentences. So that's all you need to use this method. You just need a list of basic words to start off. It could be really basic and not a huge amount, maybe 20 or 30 words. And these words, and then you just need to, so you might ask yourself, okay, well, it's great if I have these words, but what am I going to, you know, how am I, what do I actually do and how do I do it? So what I do is I just I just ask myself, if I were to meet a Thai person right now, what would I say to him or her? And I'd probably say something like, um, hello, I'm learning Thai, I, I, I understand a little bit, or something like that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll then take that sentence and I'll focus on that and I'll teach that or I'll learn that. And then I'll think, well, what, I, what would I say after that? Well, I'd probably want to ask them, where are they from? So I'd want to focus on the word where word from, which is in this list. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably want to ask them what's their job, um, what did they study, you know, stuff like this. So yeah. you just you just take whatever it is you think you're going to say, and you it's, it would probably be a good idea to write this down. So you'd write down the paragraph in the beginning, um, hello, I'm learning Thai, do you understand Thai? I understand a little bit Thai, do you understand English? Um, where are you from? Uh, uh, have you ever been here, you know, this kind of stuff. And you write that down, and then you just teach along those lines, or if you're teaching yourself, you just learn yourself along those lines. So I don't know if you remember the first lesson I gave you. It was, I can't remember what it was, but it was probably something like, um, do you understand? I yeah. understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm and then, learning and things like that. I'm, I'm learning, yeah, um, the word just. You know, I yeah. just know a little bit, um, and, and so on. And you find that these words, especially the words in this list, this when, because, from, until, these connecting words, they're very versatile. So once you know the word for only or just, you can use it in a lot of different places, not just I know a little bit, um, or I'm just working now, or whatever the case may be. So that, it's, it's really quite simple. If you have those words and you have that list, um, you can do it. And now I think we'll we'll continue our lesson, you and me, and then okay. people will see that 
they can see exactly how it's, even if it's not the very beginning and the very basic stuff, you'll quickly get an idea of this is what you're talking about. And you just, you just take whatever it is you want to say, the whole sentence, and you break it down. You start with the words, and you learn the words, and once you can say the words, you go to the next word, and then the phrase, and then the whole sentence, and, and so on. And ironing out any, any kind of grammatical difficulties that might arise, you work on that with the student. So if they're having a particular part of the sentence which they're just not getting, focus on that a little bit more, and then go away from that, and then come back to that. So you, if they struggle with a certain pronunciation, or they're just not remembering a certain word, do it and do it and do it, and then stop, and then go away for five minutes or seven minutes, and then come back, or even maybe in the next lesson, depending on how much difficulty you have. Because you don't want to get stuck on one thing, because mm. A lot of words, um, some words it will pick up immediately and some they won't. But if you keep going on that word, you won't necessarily improve their, their performance. But if you stop and you come back, then it will it'll pick up again. So, all right, good. Um, what was the word for university? Universitate. 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 Oh, and, and so it's, it's very important to, it might seem kind of ridiculous to keep repeating things, but this is actually a crucial step. Mm -hmm. So even if, even if you're getting something right, and even if you're saying it perfectly, it's good just to keep kind of going on it, because the more your, your, kind of your muscle memory gets set on this word, the harder it will be to forget. So one of the hallmarks of this method is not just that it's easy to remember, it's that after a while, it's actually pretty hard to forget. So that the words really get stuck in your mind. <laughs> um, all right, the word for after or behind in Afrikaans is achter. Listen and repeat. Te. 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 Achter. 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 It is behind. Dit is achter. Dit is achter. Dit is achter. Dit is achter. It is after. It is behind the university. It is after 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 the university. The word for restaurant in Afrikaans is pretty close to the English. It's restaurant. Listen to me. Ra. Ra. I like me. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, sorry, it was just um, <laughs> froze for a second. Okay, um, listen and repeat. Ra, 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 rant, 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 restu, 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 restaurant, 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 restaurant. How would you say the restaurant? The restaurant. How would you say at? Uh, by the restaurant. By, by the okay, good. By. 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 By the restaurant. By the restaurant. By the restaurant. By the restaurant. I am at the restaurant. At is by the restaurant. Akis by the restaurant. Akis by the restaurant. Akis by the restaurant. Akis by the restaurant. After. After. Behind. After. Behind the university. After 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 the university. How to say where? Var. Where are you? Waar is jij? 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 I'm at the restaurant. Ik is bij die 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 restaurant. Behind the university. Achter die universiteit. I'm at the restaurant behind the university. Ik is bij die restaurant achter die universiteit. Ik is bij die restaurant achter de universiteit. Ik is bij die restaurant achter de universiteit. Hello? Oh, Hello? It froze, it froze again. Now it's back. Okay, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, the connection is not too good today. I think. Um, so what you can see with the sentence is we're working on kind of directional stuff right now. 
I'm at this place, behind that place. Um, but so you just start taking, you, you start off taking something like that. Somebody, two people talking. Usually you want to go along the lines of two people talking. Mm -hmm. You always want to have this kind of running dialogue so that it's always making sense. You're not just saying behind this place, at that place. You're telling somebody where you are. So it's, it's always got to be contextual. Um, where are you? Varisye. 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 Do you know? Vietye. 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 Where am I? Varisye. That's ah. where are you? Varisak. 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 Do you know where am I? Vietye Varisak. Vietye Varisak. Vietye Varisak. Vietje Varisak. Vietje Varisak. You're at the restaurant. Jij is. Uh, jij is. At. Ja, jij is bij de restaurant. <laughs> jij is bij de restaurant. 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 So actually, this is a good example of why you got to invert things. Because yeah. what what happens is people. This is the most amazing thing. You'll teach them the individual words, and then you teach them the sentence. But once they start repeating the sentence, they tend to focus on the overall sentence. Their mind kind of looks at the big picture rather than every individual word, because that takes less brain power. If you have to look at every individual word, it takes too long, so your mind focuses on the whole sentence after you've done that, even though previously you did the words individually. And then what happens when you suddenly tell them to say the opposite, like you were saying, I'm at the restaurant. If you then tell them to say, you're at the restaurant, they suddenly freeze. Their, their brain has to go back to looking at the words individually. And so this is another crucial step. You want to invert things. So you start with a dialogue, um, which is, uh, hello, I'm at the university. Where are you? I'm here. And then you invert that and say, um, do you know where I am? I'm at the university. Where are you? Or something like this. So it's still a dialogue, but it's changed a little bit. But you don't want to change it too much. You want to have them hanging on to some kind of context so that they still know what to say. But it's going to make them stop and think a little bit more and focus on the individual words again. And this is a crucial part of the step. Okay, good. The word for uh, two, what was the word for two? No. 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 How would you say house? House. How would you say my house? May heis. May heis. May heis. May heis. May heis. The word for come in Afrikaans is kom. 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 Come to. Kom na. Kom na. Kom na. Kom na. Kom na. Come to my house. Kom na my heis. Kom na. Yeah, heis. Kom na my heis. Kom na my heis. Kom na my heis. Kom na my heis. Heis. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Please come. Asseblief kom. Asseblief kom. Asseblief kom. Asseblief kom. Asseblief kom. Please come to my house. Asseblief kom bij my heis. Na my heis. Na my heis. Asseblief kom na my huis. 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 Where are you? Waar is jij? Where is your house? Waar is jij huis? Jouw huis. Waar is jouw huis? 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 I know where is your house. Ik weet waar is jouw huis. 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 Where is my house? Waar is mijn huis? 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 Do you know where is my house? Weet jij waar is mijn huis? 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 Uh, Frozen again. 
Wait, is it back? Okay, right. it's back. <laughs> All right. Can you still see me? I can, yeah. It's, it's working today. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, behind the restaurant. Achter die restaurant. The house behind the restaurant. Die heiß achter die 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 restaurant. The word for live in Afrikaans and can also mean stay is blei. Listen and repeat. Ai. 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 Blei. 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 How do you say stay? Blei. How do you say live? Blei. I live. Ak blei. Ak blei. Ak blei. Ak blei. Ak blei. I stay. Ak blei. Ak blei. Ak blei. Ak blei. Ak blei. In the house, the word for in in Afrikaans is en. En. Go ahead. En die huis. En die huis. En die huis. En die huis. In die huis. How do you say in? In. I stay in. Ak blei 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 in. I live in the house. Ak blei in die huis. 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 I live in the house behind the university. Ak blei in die huis achter die universiteit. 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 Okay, good. How to say but? Ma. But I'm in the restaurant. Ma ak is in die 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 restaurant. What was the word for now? No. So another thing about this message you want to focus on is time words like now. You might want to expand on that, like right now. So once you teach them the word now, you teach them right now. Yesterday, recently, sometimes, because these words like the connecting words, are used very often and they're very versatile. Once you know them, you can use them anywhere. And they serve a very important function because you, we talk about time and place most of the time. Usually when we're doing something or when we're, when we're talking, we're telling people what we did, where we did it or when we did it. So that what, where, and when is, is kind of in almost every conversation that yeah. has anything to do with anything. Um, the word for right, as in right now, or it can also mean right in any context that right can mean right in English, as in you are right, um, is rach. Let's not repeat. Uh, 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 rach. 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 Right. Rach. Right now. Rach no. Rach no. Rach no. Rach no. Rach no. But right now. Ma rach no. I'm in the restaurant. Ma rach no ak is in the restaurant. Ma rach no ak is in the restaurant. Ma ma rach no ak is in the restaurant. How would you say behind the university? Achter die universiteit. The restaurant behind the university. Die restaurant achter die universiteit. Die restaurant achter die universiteit. Die restaurant achter die universiteit. Okay, good. What was the word for name? Naam. What is your name? What is your naam? 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 Please tell me. Asseblief say for 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 me. Please tell me what is your name. Asseblief say for me. What is your name? Asseblief say for me. What is your name? Asseblief say for me. What is your name? So when you're so as the lessons progress, you want to keep track of what's being learned, and then come back to those phrases and mix them with the newer phrases. So if you were doing, if you just learned in this lesson, um, where is the restaurant? 
something like that. And you learned in a previous restaurant, uh, in a previous lesson, what is your what is your name, uh, or please tell me what is your name. Mm -hmm. Then you want to start to mix that with the current stuff, like please tell me where is the restaurant. And so this is another, this is a key part of as you progress in the language, you want to build on previous stuff by mixing it with current stuff and they're, mm -hmm. therefore reinforcing it in the memory so that they also realize how things go together, how words go together and how grammar goes together and so on. And so you, you just basically keep doing this. The, the more complex um, you make it, the more they should be progressing and so on. If you, you should just keep up with their level. So you don't want to start to mix it too soon, but you, you do a lesson when you learn certain things, and then you do another lesson with the same things, and then a completely different lesson, and then a couple of completely different lessons, and then you start to bring it all back as they're about to forget it, as you're estimating that based on their usage, they're starting to forget certain things, or they might have already forgotten it, you bring it back and you mix it in with new stuff. And then the cycle continues down the line. You will again, they will again start to forget the stuff you were doing now, and then you mix that again with newer stuff, and then you come all the way back to the beginning stuff eventually, just to make sure they still know. But you don't just come back and do it again. You come back to it in a more complex way by mixing it with the stuff which they are still remembering from the last lesson. And so this is kind of an art form to mix everything <laughs> together <laughs> and to do it and to do it in a way that makes sense because you don't just want random stuff lying around. It can seem that way for a while and that's fine, but they they should eventually see it all come back into a, a whole picture. So you want to aim for that. You don't just want to go back to random stuff. You want to re rework it into the to the dialogue somehow. Yeah. So as a teacher, it's really important to remember sort of what you've done. <laughs> Yeah, you, you want to write it down, just the skeleton of it. You just want a skeleton of what you were working on and how it can be mixed into the dialogue. And you don't necessarily have to work this out ahead of time, but then, but then it, it is more challenging because then you kind of on the fly, you have to kind of rework things. I, I don't recommend it because it, it could end up becoming really weird. The dialogue could go in different directions and it's very difficult to come up with something that, that makes sense in terms of the big picture. It might make sense sentence for sentence, but when you look at two people speaking the overall dialogue, it would make no sense for yeah. at all to talk like that. Okay. How would you say, please tell me? Where is your house? Where is your house? <laughs> yeah, okay. Where is your house? Okay. As a brief say for my, where is your house? As a brief say for my, where is your house? As a brief say for my, where is your house? As a brief say for my, where is your house? How would you say with? Met. How would you say together? Psalm. Together with? Psalm met. Met. Together with? Yeah, yeah, psalm met. Psalm okay. met. Together with my friend. Some met 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 my friend. Together with my friend at the restaurant behind the university. And so you, actually when I say this the other way around in Afrikaans, you want to say, I am at the restaurant behind the university with my friend. So let's, let's break that down first. That's the okay. long one. I am at the restaurant. Akis Baidi restaurant. Akis by the restaurant. Akis by the restaurant. I'm at the restaurant behind the university. Akis by the restaurant after 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 the university. I'm at the restaurant behind the university with my friend. Akis by the restaurant. After the university, so I met my friend. Akis by the restaurant, after the university, so I met my friend. Akis by the restaurant, after the university, so I met my friend. Excellent. And so one of the things about this, this kind of, you were building the sentence. We start with the first part of the sentence, mm -hmm. and I and we repeat it quite a few times. And then we do the second part, but we, we still do the first part when we're doing the second part. So you'll, you'll end up repeating the first part four times, and then the second part, two times, and when you get to the third part, you've, you've repeated the third part two times, the second part four times, and the first part eight times. 
Uh, and this is really useful later on because what you're doing is, although it might just seem like you're just learning these words, what you're actually doing is implanting the, the pattern of the grammar, which is the same for all words, at least in this context, in this case. Mm -hmm. You're implanting that so deeply into your mind that eventually you're going to be saying something completely correctly, grammatically, even when it's the first time that you're saying that sentence with completely new words. So that's why this kind of this repetition thing is very important because I remember when I was studying the Japanese, I was doing this because I was using the Pemsley method to, to learn Japanese. And even when I, when, I, when I was saying a Japanese sentence for the very first time to somebody in an actual conversation, I would suddenly stop and, and kind of just be shocked at myself and be like, wow, I just got that completely right and said it perfectly. <laughs> Even though it's the first time I said it, but it's because I had that deep pattern in my mind. And when that pattern is so deeply imprinted into your brain, you you can't help but just speak fast and correctly, and you really come across as a native speaker. So it really, it, it, it might not seem very useful in the beginning. You're thinking, well, why am I constantly saying these words? I know them already. Why am I saying them again and again? It's all about the grammar at that point. Yeah. Because the words, you're going to remember the words one way or another, but the grammar... This method helps you not learn the rules and know how you should speak. Rather, it just gives you a natural way of how to say things. I don't. I can't even explain the rules of Japanese grammar at all. I just know that that thing is so deeply imprinted in my mind that I just. That's all I know how to do it, and I don't <laughs> really know why I do it that way. But eventually, it'll be like this uh, with any language that you learn using this yeah. method. Yeah, and no, yeah. I can see it already with the Afrikaans. Yesterday I was having a conversation with my husband in Afrikaans whilst we were cooking. Really? And I was uh, saying things that I'd not really said before. And I was saying the right. Sure. He's looking at me as if to say, how yeah. do you do that? Yeah, sure. It's because it you, right. you have that imprint. Yes. Yeah. It, that's, that's a perfect way to describe it, to say it just felt right. That's exactly how I would describe it in Japanese. I, I, even when I get something wrong, I usually stop myself and I think, well, that just doesn't sound right. There's something, it's like you just have a feeling. And so this method really teaches you what it should sound like. And that's how you know to speak correctly because you just get a feeling as you're talking. I should say it this way. That just comes out logically. And so it, it really imprints it deeply into your mind. And so it's very helpful for learning vocabulary, but I would describe it as being the best method to learn grammar because you're learning the grammar like a person in, who speaks that language naturally knows it. Like we don't know, we don't know English grammar at all. At least I don't. And so I just, I just know how, how it should sound, what sounds right, and I just use it that way. And so this is the the most efficient way to learn grammar without knowing the linguistic rules and everything, and just getting to the communication, which is what everybody wants. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna yeah, so try it for the French. I've been looking at it should. online. I'm definitely yeah, gonna should, get it when I get paid. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's it's a pretty expensive the yeah, tapes and yeah. The, yeah, yeah. But the ones for Japanese were excellent. I used them for Chinese as well um, at, at the very beginning, and uh, it's it's really a great method. And once you know, it's good when you listen to the tapes. You really get an idea of how it works. Um, and once you know how it works, you can use it to teach yourself for other languages, assuming that you have somebody to ask questions and so on. And so in, a, in about a month's time, there is going to be a Thai festival in Johannesburg. And so, so I'm, I'm quickly trying to learn oh, Thai wow. just for fun. <laughs> yeah, just, just for fun. And I'm like rushing to try and do it within this month. And I'm, I'm, so I've already got a list of all the words and, and, and the, these words I was telling you about, the connecting words. I'm yeah. focusing on them because then I can make it seem like I know a lot more than I do <laughs> by trying to connect little sentences. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how much I can do in one month. Yeah. I, I think with this method, if you apply it every day, um, you can probably, I mean, I'm not going to be speaking great Thai or anything, but I'll probably be able to make a couple of people laugh or something. So. Yeah, it'll, it'll be good, yeah. So do you have any other questions or anything you'd like to know besides that? Um, no, I think you've answered yeah, everything that's, brilliantly. Yeah, that's, Thank that's, you. That's it, that's it in a nutshell, basically. You yeah. just take those words, apply them to a natural conversation that you've thought about. Something, usually try and imagine what you would actually say. Because if you just want a conversation, you can come up, come up with weird stuff. If you're actually thinking, if I was standing with a real person here right now, what would I be saying? That's the best way to go because you'll come up with stuff which you'll actually want to use. And then start yeah. off with that 
And once you have that, you'll find it becomes easier to learn everything else, which is more abstract and so on. Yeah, everything we've done so far has been useful. Like I could go to South Africa and I would use that stuff. I can imagine that sure, it's stuff, sure. stuff that yeah. I would use, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and once you have that, then you can go to the more abstract stuff, which will make you completely fluent eventually. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you. All right, excellent. Okay, see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. Bye. Bye.